Right. Yeah. Sorry for that. Whatever the inconvenience caused. Uh, uh, whatever we we discussed is just about uh, you know uh, whatever the the content what I formed uh, as per my best knowledge. Okay. And then this is not limited to whatever I mentioned here. Like along with that, each and every topic whenever we cover, we are gonna discuss much more than what we mentioned here because. Whoever attended my database course, they'll they will they will already know that how our training session is going to be like. It's all going to be an, a practical whatever we we explain. Everything will be demonstrated on the uh, lab, and then everything will be uh, uh, shown. And then uh, all the ready uh, lab exercise and workbook will be available. And then every day, whatever command we're going to fire it on on our uh, lab each and every day the session will be recorded and then will be uh, uh, will be like uploaded to our google drive and then you can refer those recorded sessions along with that recorded whatever the daily logs so you just copy paste those command and then you can uh, execute in your lab and then you can uh, see the output so that will be like uh, provided on day in and day out uh, and then every day, rec every day session will be recorded and then uploaded to Google Drive, and then you can uh, use them for for your reference, right? So having said that, uh, uh, and then each and every batch has its own dedicated WhatsApp group, and then all the communication will happen in that particular WhatsApp group, and then uh, once you make a payment for this particular course, and it's like lifetime accessible, whatever the course material, uh, recorded sessions, all the lab exercise and everything will be available lifetime access in our Google Drive. You can use it at any time. And then if you want to re-attend this course, or you want to brush up yourself, you can feel free to uh, join any upcoming batch. So you don't need to pay any money for that because well, it's a one-time registration. So, and then you can, uh, you can attend a number of times, no issue in that. And then uh, just coming to uh, our blog. So any new technical update, you can always refer my blog, malikjyotifurblogspot.com. I'll be keep on writing my new content and then I'll be uploading the new videos or new webinars on my YouTube channel. Uh, always feel watch, uh, refer my YouTube channel and watch those new videos, whatever coming. And then we have our technical discussion group, that Telegram group, most of you might be aware. If not, then join our Telegram group and then we will uh, discuss a lot of technical things over there. Uh, and then uh, whatever just we discussed, this entire course content. Uh, and then along with that, there'll be like some extra topics. We're gonna cover it at the end of the course. Like some of some guys, you guys like ping me that, uh, rack to rack data guard setup was not included in this particular uh, uh, session. Right, that's true. That's going to be like one of our uh, advanced class. So we're going to take it at the end of this course. So this is like your rack database to non rack database. I want to set up my, I have a two node or three node or four node rack database. Sh can I set up a standalone database as a DR database for my rack database? Or can I, is it mandatory to have a rack to rack data guard setup? So all those concepts we'll be discussing and then we'll be setting up a rack to rack data guard and rack to standalone data guard at the end of the course as an extra, extra topic, not the part of this course, but it will be covered. And then OEM architecture. Recently I have done some OEM session on my YouTube channel. Probably you might have seen that. So we'll see one of the live demonstration of installation and configuration of OEM and some of the data guard of uh, installation and configuration, data guard broker installation and configuration and some of the wallet and security concepts and Varaka licensing. So those are like, you know, um, some of the high level advanced topics. So those will be like, uh, not that easily you can get it uh, until unless if you're not thorough with your rack concept. So once uh, rack course is done, so we'll take these few of these topics as a uh, extra classes and then we'll cover it at the end of this this track course right and then uh, as i showed you like all the course materials and uh, all the uh, you know uh, lab exercise all the ppts and along with your day-to-day uh, -day lab uh, for each and every topics and then ready vms all those are like uploaded uh, on the google drive so you'll get access on all of them 
and then you can download it and you can uh, watch it by offline or you can watch it uh, from google drive itself right so having said that what are the prerequisites for this rack course right so you should be good uh, knowledge in your database architecture without database uh, architecture uh, if you directly jump into the learning rack it's a quite challenging it is doable but it's a quite challenging and you have to spend a lot of time and you have to understand uh, each and every database concept along as long uh, you know as and when we discuss about rack so you will be like lost and then you have to go back and you have to uh, first brush up your database concept and then along with that you have to learn your rack so to avoid that so you should have a strong knowledge under uh, oracle architecture and oracle basics and oracle database administration basic uh, activities and then your asm basics so what is asm uh, if you don't know also at least you should know uh, how your storage structure like where are your data files will store where is your control file will store where are your redo log files will store and what are the sga pga component what are the buffer caches all those like basics understanding you should be aware of that then only you can uh, jump into rack without knowing all of those concepts if you start learning rack so it will be like nightmare and then you will not be able to understand uh, you know all of them and then uh, you should know what is rmen because without knowing rmen uh, directly if you start working on backup and recoveries of your rack databases or uh, you don't know like what is rmen like how to connect to rmen and what is your recovery catalog and how you're going to take a rmen backup so if you don't know the basics of rmen again you will feel that little difficulties over here but if you know that then it's well and good so you can you know you can learn it easily so these are like your few of the prerequisites you should know uh, and then if you are aware of all of these and then your rack is a next step for you to you know enhance your skill and if you don't know this concept first you have to brush up yourself and then jump into your uh, rack right so uh, this is like your prerequisites and then uh, this is like uh, one of the environment setup that is uh, we discussed in our database course uh, and then already just added here as a, some of the prerequisites so you can go ahead and do all of this setup or uh, setting up of your iso setting up of your oracle software where you can download your oracle software where you can download oracle patches how you are going to set up your vmware workstation your virtual box and uh, how you are going to install your linux that is rhl ol ubuntu or whatever uh, flavor you want to install and then how you are going to uh, install your linux partitions uh, and then you have to understand the linux partitions in details how the linux partitions will work like slash boot partition var uh, lib and your uh, mnt and your root and your home directory what are those all uh, uh, partitions you have to understand and you have to understand how to set up m repository how to install rpm how to remove rpm how to uh, upgrade your rpm all those like uh, prerequisites uh, checks you have to like first thorough with all of them uh, these are like part of our database course we already covered and then some of the handy tools like winscp putty mobile xterm your uh, remote desktop connection all of them are we discussed as part of our database course so you should understand uh, this concept first and once you understand so you wonder like we I explained here in brief uh, what are these concept and all those things you can go through by your own and then if you thorough with this concept then your rack will be like much easier otherwise like you know you have to first study them and then come back to rack uh, because you don't know like what are these partitions uh, why we use the root partition why you use like home partition what is this boot partition what is this slash uh, if you don't know all of these partitions then uh, it's even though like it's a linux admin task but as a dba we should know like okay what is this etc oh etc is about, it contain all the configuration files like etc this contains all the configuration file okay i have my etc vara tab i have my etc vara inst oh, all the configuration file should be under etc what is this home home is a home directory for your all the users my oracle user my grid user oh, for all the users home is the directory for that and what is this slash slash is a root directory from master directory from there all the sub directories will start what is this temp uh, all those like directory structures partitions you should be aware of uh, then your like uh, your dba activities or the rack activities will be like much more easier
right for this like you know we have uh, already pre sessions already taken and uh, if you want like you can brush up by referring those sessions uh, otherwise like you can sit and study all of them uh, that will help you for understanding your rack concept much easier so how you can add a disk how you can partition a disk how you can set up a m repository and how you can install upgrade uh, and you know remove your rpm and how you can check whether rpm installed or not of uh, all that you know it should be like handy command you should be aware of that and then what are this win scp putty mobile extrem remote desktop how you are going to use it how i'm going to use my win scp how i'm going to use my putty how i'm going to use my mobile extrem what is the remote desktop uh, all these like uh, daily use tool uh, even for dba or even for rack admin you should be thorough with all of this tool and if not again we already covered in our uh, database course so just uh, go ahead and then uh, refer these uh, pre defined sessions uh, who are register for this rack course definitely they will get uh, access on this pre defined courses pre defined this uh, sessions so you just go through and then refer these videos and then you will be understanding uh, what are these prerequisites and why we need it so if you watch those videos then you will be able to understand all of them and then some of the a uh, handy network concept because when you start with your rack concept so you'll be like lost because there are so many networking concept will come into picture here like you know your uh, public network public ip your private ip private network your uh, scan ips your vips or your uh, ha ips your node interconnect ips your node heartbeat and your disk heartbeat there are so many networking concept will come into picture here in case of rack databases and without knowing your network understanding uh, how your network works in your linux how i can check my interfaces what are the interfaces are assigned in my linux server and how i can check the ips ip assigned with all the interfaces uh, all those things you should know that's uh, your network and dns and dhcp concept again this is also one of the prerequisites classes we covered in uh, as part of our database course and again this is like uh, a uh, pre sessions uh, already pre recorded sessions are available uh, you can go ahead and practice it uh, we already explained here and then you can go ahead and practice all of them uh, and then who are again uh, you will be getting access on all these pre recorded sessions you have to uh, refer them first and then thorough with that basics of your linux and basics of those networking and once you are done with them and then that's where we'll start with our actual rack classes so here in this today's session i am going to touch base on few of the topics uh, introduction to the cluster where uh, i'll just take few of the topics here i'm just going to brief it here in this today's class and tomorrow's class uh, probably we are going to talk about uh, uh, rack startup sequence uh, and some of the voting risk and some of the ocrs and some of the other concept we will we'll discuss tomorrow and then actually uh, starting from the next weekend Uh, that's where we will start with the uh, uh, from the scratch we'll start from the uh, installation uh, installation of our linux and setting up of our virtual box and our networking our shared disk and then we'll start with our uh, installation so this actual installation will start with uh, from the next week onwards but today again as i said i will just going to touch base few of the topics uh, how your rack and the standalone database and then what are the characteristics and then tomorrow we'll see some of the startup sequences what are the uh, services or background processes uh, and then what are the mandatory things you should know for your rack and uh, as a dba uh, then we will stop it there and then from the next week convert we'll start the actual uh, rack course from the scratch from the building your uh, one single node and then once the single node is done and you can build one more node by cloning or by Uh, export and import and then you can prepare two nodes and then make some network connectivity between these two nodes and then uh, prepare some shared disk between these two nodes and then you can set up your rack databases and cluster were set up between these two nodes and then you can uh, arrange one more node and you can add that node to the existing cluster and then you can drop that node from the existing cluster all those activities will see it uh, once we start our actual classes right so any questions so far uh, whatever we covered right so if no questions uh, 
let's see a uh, introduction to clusterware and the real application cluster architecture uh, the name may be like uh, high level words or might be confusing what is clusterware what is rack uh, rack stands for real application cluster uh, that is your uh, a base software which will forms uh, two or three nodes together act as a single server uh, we know right cluster is nothing but group of anything like you know cluster of your servers means two or three servers or hosts together you can make it one cluster you can talk about normal words cluster is nothing but group of something so real application cluster rack stands for real application cluster that's a name given by oracle so that's nothing but combining uh, two or three database servers will make it as a single uh, entity and then at the end or the at the end world or the end the business users if they want to connect for them it is looks like a one single entity but at the back end it will be like combination of multiple clusters multiple nodes so that's where the real application cluster comes into picture so in this introduction to the cluster or the real application cluster architecture uh, we have uh, we have uh, multiple concept i just listed out here difference between your standalone and react databases uh, oracle cluster where configuration and client connection to your database and rack shared storage rack background processes control file redo log file data file and sp file and you know all your archive redo log files all those where you are going to sit and then cluster where software component your ocr voting disk and your olr that is local registry and your oracle cluster where startup sequences and how to find you find out your rack databases and rack database informations and some of the cluster where troubleshooting logs so these are like you know few of the key points or key topics i just picked up here as part of our demo classes and then we'll start one at a time so if you have any questions you just unmute yourself and then uh, ask or you can ping here hi my cousin yeah so uh, load balancing and uh, application level uh, connectivity issues will uh, will, will all will be that. like yeah it will all be part of your uh, rack those are like basics so it will be covered uh, along with those topics uh, i have not specifically mentioned here but when we talk about our uh, uh, rack uh, connectivity rack administration here uh, this particular course uh, left chapter number 11 which will talk about your uh, uh, you can see cluster resource and services that's where you know that that your load balancing and your uh, application connectivity everything will comes into picture i'm going to explain uh, all the okay. concept here all right so uh, just to brief about uh, uh, difference between your standalone and rack databases Uh, one second one second yep uh, so related to performance related issues so mm -hmm. uh, are you going to teach performance related things related to rack uh, things performance related issues will not be covered here that will be like separate course so performance related that's all together will be like your uh, some of the performance tuning topics will be covered in our database course but this purely what i'm talking about this is all your rack administration so in the rack administration okay. course it will be like your rack maintenance rack configuration and rack installation upgradation it will be like totally your rack architecture level and performance tuning will not be covered as part of this course whatever the topic mm -hmm. is defined here so it will be like touch base here mm -hmm. so uh, fra related issues everything will, will be covered here yeah 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 all will be covered uh, at part of this one the except your performance related issues some of the basics of performance for example your rack node is not communicating to other rack node and your buffer cache is not your cache fusion is not happening uh, those kind of uh, uh, your cluster related performance tuning we can uh, discuss here in this course but if you talk about your query related performance tuning and user complaining you know queries are running slow and those kind of performance related or uh, query related so those will not be covered as part of this yes wait is hello right so 
if you talk about the difference between your rack and standalone a uh, single instance database is one to one relationship like one database is mapped to one instance and your end user or application users are accessing it to that one single instance or one single databases but whereas rack environment it's a single database uh, connected to the multiple instances uh, multiple database servers and for the end users they can connect to any one of the instance and they can access my uh, common storage so that's my rack so if i go here uh, this is my uh, cluster configuration so this is my rack setup so for at the end all the application users or the business users they can just use a scan name that's a single name given to my entire cluster if it is a four node cluster five node cluster six node cluster whatever the how many node cluster doesn't matter i'll just have a single name scan and then i will give it to my application team so they will connect using the scan name and then internally the scan will connect via application that is a sorry uh, that will connect with the vip associated to each of those nodes and then via vip you can either uh, use that application specific service or uh, that local listener and then the instance and there is a grid infrastructure in that each particular node that's a grid infrastructure software is a base software which will form your uh, oracle real application cluster where and then inside that grid infrastructure software you will have a asm instance will be running which will be managing your uh, communication between your database instance and your asm storage and asm stands for your automatic uh, storage management and then uh, that has running under your clusterware software that clusterware software will be part of your grid infrastructure software so this all will be uh, presiding under each of those uh, cluster nodes if i have four node cluster so all four node cluster will be having the same configuration whatever uh, we have uh, these are like a bare minimum required configuration on all the nodes you may have a different different service configured on that but services are mandatory on all the nodes instances are mandatory on all the nodes and your listeners are mandatory on all the nodes your grid infrastructure software is mandatory on all the cluster nodes and your asm storage and your clusterware software is also mandatory on all the cluster nodes and all this setup will be done on each of those cluster nodes and your clusterware software will form all the four or five nodes as a single uh, real application cluster and then all those nodes will be pointed to a common shared storage and all your data actual database data end user data or business data will be residing under that common storage whoever users connect to any of the nodes they will be able to access that common storage so if i go next slide here so this is the difference between your uh, standalone and the rack so you can see you can access your uh, application via mobile or your web browser or the desktop and you can go to uh, your application server from application server you can connect to your uh, standalone uh, instance and that will connect to your back end database and similarly if you go with the rack all your like uh, the application connections via your web browser or mobile or desktop will go to your application server from application server they can connect to any one of the instance like you know rack node 1 rack node 2 rack node 3 rack node 4 if you like multiple rack node they will connect to any one of that rack node but at the end they will be having a common storage so if i can correlate the same thing here uh, the oracle rail application cluster architecture your client will connect using a public network and then that public network is nothing but your scan ip will be giving a scan tns details to that client and he will access using that public network your scan is going to run in public network so one of the common question they will ask uh, is my scan will run on a public network or private network so your scan will always run on your public network so your client will connect using that scan with the public network and with the public lan it will go to any one of your cluster nodes if it's a four node five node six node or eight node cluster your client connection will go to any one of the node the based upon your load balancing we'll discuss what is load balancing what is scan how it works and all those things once we start our actual course but it's a high level i'm talking about so your scan is smart enough to reroute all the client connection to any one of the cluster node which is having a least load that's a load balancing and then once the uh, your client connection is connected to node that will be using a node vip again node vip 
your virtual ip is always runs under your public network that's also one of the common questions is my vip run under public network or private network so your all vips will run under a public network so from the scan it will connect to any one of the node using that node vip and then from that node vip it will go to that node local listener and from that local listener it will connect to that particular database instance and then of uh, that database instance is indirectly connected to your uh, storage that will be your san or nas or or uh, your whatever the nfs disk or whatever the shared storage it will connect and then that client is continue to access the data and then uh, this since this is a san network or the uh, uh, san or nas or whatever the network uh, there's a there's a, a private switch for that or there's a private network for that that is called uh, interconnect switch or the interconnect network or the private network private network is used for a node to node communication for example this is a four node rack all the four node will be internally communicate each other using that private network so your private network is uh, not accessible by outside world that's a private to that particular cluster nodes these four nodes to accessing that private network within that four node and only you cannot access outside of that four node and then uh, if you see like if i if somebody uh, if somebody connected to node 1 and he he ran some uh, update query and then that updated block is there in my node 1 and if somebody connected to node 4 he want to access that uh, updated block that block is not available in the storage that block is available in this node 1 memory then how it is going to access how this node will get that particular block that is because of your private network whatever the private network that uh, something called uh, uh, internally there is a cache fusion we can call it as uh, in the react concepts cache fusion means uh, this whatever the user connected to node 4 he needs that block which is updated in node 1 by this particular node 1 user the updated block is there in my node 1 memory so due to that cache fusion uh, but with the help of your private network that block is directly transferred from node 1 to node 4 and then that node 4 user will get that result and then it will be displayed to that end user so that is called a cache fusion so all those concepts we'll discuss in depth once we start our actual course so this is like high level architecture how the rack works and high level architecture how your standalone server works here in this case if the database goes down it will be like complete downtime if the instance goes down it's a complete downtime but whereas in the rack what happens if the storage goes down again no doubt in that complete downtime because uh, storage is a separate part if you are like storage level high availability and then you can sustain your uh, database and even here uh, in, in 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 rack we have something called uh, mirroring uh, you know we have a normal mirroring or high mirroring normal mirroring is like two way two copies and high mirroring uh, is like uh, three copies so even though like one disk lost or two disk lost still your database is continue to work but here in this case it's not going to not going to happen in that case. In, it's not going to happen like that if a single disk goes here your entire database will go down so and this here, uh, mirroring is a uh, is a raid based uh, like it is a uh, done on a uh, uh, raid basis or uh, something like uh, mirroring will be done at your asm level you no need to worry about your mirroring at uh, hardware level so mirroring whatever the raid 1 raid 2 raid 3 that is your hardware level mirroring so you no need to worry about your uh, os level hardware mirroring so that is your os guy will take care but apart from that your asm has its own mirroring at the disk group level so uh, okay. one of the recommendation is if the if the data if the if the asm if your oracle is doing a mirroring at your disk group level it is not advisable to do mirroring at your disk level so that is a, that is at your os level your admin has to you know uh, stop that mirroring at os level okay thank you right so uh, that's about the difference between your standalone and the rack and then the scan i just told you like all your application will connect to scan uh, the scan will be running under your scan listener and then the scan listener will take that incoming connection and then it will pass it to any one of your cluster nodes and then how it's going to pass 
and then how my scan knows what is the least loaded connection how my scan will smart enough to distribute the load across all the cluster nodes everything we can see it in details when we start our actual class so this is like how the scan concept works here so end user will use a just a scan name and internally the scan name will be having a three scan listeners and those three scan listener will take that incoming connection and it will pass it to any one of that local listener that local listener will be running on each of those cluster nodes and then your scan is smart enough to know which node to pass the connection that's a load balancing we can call it as so we'll deep dive into that what is load balancing and then we'll understand more on that load balancing once we start our actual class and then again uh, that i already explained it multiple times uh, high level end how your uh, entire uh, rack setup works here your uh, front end mobile or url or internet or desktop you are going to use a scan connection here single uh, scan entity you can see it is this is your scan name uh, server.scan.com whatever the scan you're just giving one scan name here and then that with the help of that scan name you're going to connect to node 1 or node 2 or node 3 or node 4 and it has its node uh, vip these are called your vip and one of the common question they will ask what are your vips and these are your physical ips what are your physical ips uh, we'll understand what are node vips what are physical ips and your scan connection will pass it to the node 1 but the connection will go to your vip it will not go to the node ip and then we'll understand why connection will go to always node vip why it will not go to my node ip node ips are your physical ips if the node goes down your physical ip will go down and your vip will not go down and your vip will be floating in your cluster and it will connect to any one of uh, uh, existing cluster node and then connection will be continued to uh, form and again each node to node or node to your disk all the communication will happen with interconnects we can call it the interconnects or the private network so we'll see uh, what's the ip range of my private network is my ip range of my interconnect or the private network is same as my physical node or is that is it my same as my vip range or is it my same as scan ip range so all those networking concept we'll understand once we start with our installation and then the architecture and then uh, your shared storage we are talking about in the rack we always uh, have a shared storage so in the shared storage we have our voting disk ocr and all our data files all our control files redo log files all our rk log files everything we are gonna uh, keep it under my asm disk groups so you can see our data file control files redo log files flashback data files all those things we are going to keep it inside my asm disk groups that will be like my shared common shared storage and then we have a specific background processes for clusterware to we 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 install clusterware software it's going to form my clusterware but there are bunch of background processes uh, in order to maintain and manage your clusterware just by installing your asm software it doesn't mean that you are achieved your clusterware setup once you set up your clusterware on day in and day out there will be like bunch of background processes which will manage your clusterware setup uh, to maintain your integrity and to maintain your data integrity and data uniformity and you know there is to avoid the data duplication and to avoid the data corruption all those things uh, your bunch of background processes which will manage this by acquiring a specific clock and you know updating a specific tables and specific data for example your gcs is the one global cache service uh, which will help for the cache fusion as i said like you know of the updated block is available in the other instance and somebody can easily access using that or uh, catch a fusion and there are some other lock processes your lms lmd gs lmon and lck0 all of these like your uh, locking mechanism and your global nk services uh, all these background processes will help together to maintain your data integrity in the rack databases so all these background processes will understand will deep dive on each of these processes and we'll physically go into our servers and we'll see uh, how those background processes are, are located uh, and then we'll see through all of them for example just to say one of the common difference uh, we might have worked but we are not noticed all your databases will start with ora underscore and all your asm will start with asm underscore so all these processes gs ldm all these processes will start with your asm underscore 
and then we'll see all of these processes how uh, these processes uh, will be formed and then help for my uh, cluster where integrity and then again uh, all these uh, files control file read lock file data file and your uh, sp file everything will be kept under your uh, asm and then uh, we have a my asm sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. one sec so this course contain only 19c or you are covering history of 11c and 12c and so you are giving background of it 19c there's a uh, there's, the a huh? there's a difference between like 12c 11g 19c what are the different what are the changes happened so all those like new features will be covered but this course will be purely based upon the 19c but we'll be covering the differences between your 11g and 12c and 19c what are the changes happened Yeah. Right. Okay. All these uh, data files you can go inside your ASM CMD, and then you can you can read through all those uh, data files where the data files are residing and how you're gonna copy those data files. Uh, sir, those one, can... one more concern. Yeah. While you're saying uh, upgradation, so you are going to teach upgradation like 12C to 19C. Right, uh, right. Which version you are going from to from 11G to 19C and 12C to 19C? Both we are going to see it. The upgradations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are teaching different patterns of upgradation while right, right, doing right. 19C upgrade. Right. Okay. okay. So recently got 20C also, right? So will you teach that upgradation also? 20c no that's not included but we can we can see it at the at the end of this course we'll see how it goes mm -hmm. yeah 20c upgradation we'll see that once uh, 20c cluster we are done like we'll see at the end of that course we'll see the 20c upgradation one more question uh, right. everything under uh, non cdb only or uh, you are going to teach both uh, non cdb and uh, both like non cdb and cdb so there's a, if you could have seen like there's a separate topic for your pluggable databases, right? Uh, your uh, chapter number 16 talks about your uh, multi-tenant activity. That is purely on CDB and PDBs. Right, so uh, what we can do, we can stop it here today. Uh, tomorrow we can continue with the uh, other rest of the topics, whatever, like uh, just high level topics. Uh, with OLR, OCR, and so then tomorrow the, only demo, right? Yeah, one more demo we'll see it tomorrow, and then actually starting from the <laughs> next weekend, we'll start the actual course. What is the translation? Okay. To share this slide with us. Yeah, this all will be already available uh, in our Google Drive. So this is the only slide we are going to refer it, and you will see that slide here uh, in this Google Drive. You are going to refer that same slide on your daily work. Okay. Um, what is the configuration required for this one? So... Uh, for your React setup? Yes, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see it. Like, uh, I'm going to give some recommendations. Uh, uh, we'll, once, the, once our, uh, 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 once our um, uh, dedicated WhatsApp group is formed, so we'll see all the, how much configuration required and all those things. Minimum, like, 16 GB RAM is required. So all those we are going to discuss over there. Okay. All right, so we'll stop it here for today. And then tomorrow we'll continue a few more topics. Uh, probably I'm going to uh, uh, cover some few more like startup sequences. Uh, Malik, uh, can we use this OCA like we, have, we are getting uh, right for uh, 30 days of pre trial instead of this virtual VM box? Yeah, that you can try it by your own practice. OK. So uh, does it support like, uh, I'm not sure like uh, what are the yeah. we're getting. That will be like very limited. Uh, no, that will be like very limited. Yeah, that will be like very limited uh, memory and hardware. So 